the children when you were 12 years old and how you inspired your friends to join you? So I was a late achiever. So you're nine, I was 12. So you have a three year lead on me, I'm just saying. So when I was 12, I read a story. Um, I was looking for the comics, actually, one morning. Uh, and I read them every morning, I still do. But that one morning, I never made it to the comics. I stopped, uh, and I saw this story about this young boy from Pakistan. He was a child slave, so he was sold when he was four years old. Uh, his family desperately needed money, and if you imagine, they literally uh, had to sell their child to do this. Uh, and so he went to work in a carpet factory. He did this until he was 10. He escapes, and he finds the courage. Uh, he was like you in many ways, extremely articulate. And he started going village to village, and eventually traveled to North America and even Europe to share his story. He became very famous around the world as this young advocate. He returns home to Pakistan, and he's killed. He's shot dead in front of his home. And most people believe he was killed because he was speaking out on these issues. Um, and Pakistan being very different from Canada, there are some challenges sometimes for people who raise their voice. And, and so I read the story, I looked at my life, I looked at his life, and it made me pretty angry that this exists in our world and I want to help. And so I brought that to my class. We have to do something. We started calling other charities. We said we want to help, we want to make a difference. And not a whole lot of people believe that kids could make a difference. So we decided to set up our own group. There's a film I saw of when Iqbal was buried. Uh, this young girl stood over at his grave and said in, in Urdu, in the language in Pakistan, in that region, said the day that Iqbal died, a thousand new Iqbals were born. And never could have imagined how true that was. You've met amazing leaders and change makers, you know, like Oprah and the Dalai Lama in our war. What do they all have in common? In common? That's an interesting question. Um, what do Oprah, the Dalai Lama, and Al Gore have in common? <laughs> this almost sounds like the beginning of a knockout joke, just saying. Um, it's a great question. I'd say that, you know, each person there um, holds passionately to their beliefs. So, in the case of Al Gore, he's come to Weedah and he talks about the environment. He's very, and he's yeah. been passionate his whole life on the topic. In the case of Dalai Lama, he's joined us and he's spoken passionately about peace and, and compassion, and, and he believes we have to find inner peace to create peace around the world. Uh, Oprah, we've done a lot of work with, and, and she's passionate about service, philanthropy. When she was young, a person helped her, and that changed her life as a young person, so she wants to pay it forward. Uh, and, and, and that's what she dedicates a lot of her life to now. So, the thing they all have in common, um, all them passionately to their beliefs. Who or what inspires you? Uh, well, at the moment, it's a nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like yeah. I'm just saying. When we started, so here's the deal: when we started for the children, we picked up the phone, we started calling other charities, and said we want to help. And a group actually said to us on the phone, "Well, kids." If you know your parents keep their credit card, that's how you can help. Which, I'm pretty sure if anyone ever says that to you on the phone, you would, <laughs> that's pretty much what we did. Um, and you know, so often in charities when we first started thought that we were too young. Uh, and we wanted to prove them wrong. And that's where a lot of our original passion came from. Uh, and I gotta say, when I was nine, I was not nearly as articulate. I had a speech impediment as a kid. Yeah. So terrified speaking to people. And you entered a speech competition yes. and you, you were good at it. Uh, well, I, I, I think I was, I, I think I won because I was passionate. I wasn't the most articulate speaker, but I was definitely passionate about what I was saying. And so I've come to realize sometimes it doesn't matter if you're the best at it, but as long as you really are passionate and you try, uh, sometimes you'll even surprise yourself. Okay, let's sign you up and with some fun questions. Bring it on, bring it on. Okay. I feel like this is Letterman when at the end they're like, okay, the one on one quick ones. Okay, what's on your iPod? Ah, I don't have an iPod. Well, do you have music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, so um, what I have is, um, this is going to sound geeky, but it's true. I have um, something on here called Audible. Audible is actually a, um, you download books, and they will read the book to you. So when I'm like waiting in line at airports and whatnot, I can plug it in, I listen on my BlackBerry, and I can actually listen to someone reading the book. So they can read me the New York Times and things like that every morning. I know that sounds really geeky, but it's true. You still read the newspaper like you did when you were 12? I, I try to every morning. Um, when, when I do want to just have a lot of fun and just listen to some music, I come to a wee day. Because we're really lucky that we have everyone from like Demi Lovato to right. Sean Desmond here. So I get to go to all the concerts, and they kind of come to me. So it works out really well. So like the concert and a wee day gets to combine together. So it's an easy commute. What's your favorite movie? 
I love movies. So that is one thing. Like, you, if I don't listen to a whole lot of music, I watch a ton of movies because it's the one thing you can do no matter where you are in the world. You can like. Um, well, okay. Well, <laughs> this also sounds really geeky. My my favorite is a really old film. It's called Lawrence of Arabia. So the reason why I really liked it is because I love Africa. I spend more time in Africa, in Kenya, in one location at one point, than almost anywhere else it seems. So this is a really cool film about that. The best one that I've seen recently, the last one that I saw was the new Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man film. I saw it on a plane. And it was good? I thought it was good. I liked it. But I, I, I haven't gotten to the absolute end yet. Because when you're watching it on flights, it takes three or four flights. Because you watch it and you're like, ah, oh, man. And you get off the flight and you got to keep watching it. So don't tell me how it ends. I'm not... I didn't watch it. There we go. OK. Yeah. So I can't spoil it. <laughs> Perfect. Um, what's on your bucket list? So I do keep a lot of bucket lists. I, I have a long list. A um, couple things uh, that I've always wanted to do. I've actually wanted to motorcycle from the far north tip of Africa to the southern tip, something called Cape to Cairo, which is a very famous journey that a lot of people have done. I wanted to just take six months, disappear, um, no emails, no phones, and do that. No we days. Uh, no we days. <laughs> so I know that that's a little tough now because we have all these things taking place. But someday, that's on my bucket list. What does we day mean to you in three words? See, funny enough, this is something that we spend a lot of time talking about even before you ask the question. And the reason being is we took an entire year to think of this. We held meetings, brainstormed. Why? Because we, so you notice we created a new tagline. So for Free the okay. Children, our tagline is, we are the change. Right. The words of Mahatma Gandhi, we yeah. change. So we are the change. For we to we, we created we live the change. And for we day, we is always the same part. So the, the other three words we wanted to add was, we inspire that change. Is that why you're like that's that? That's the sign of Wee Day, absolutely. <laughs> so our three words for me, for Wee Day, what it means, inspire the change. Thank you so much for taking the time for the interview, Craig. For the record, I've sat across like Oprah and the late night talk shows. Seriously, they got nothing on you. You should got, you know, move over like Oprah and Letterman. I would totally watch this on like everywhere. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.